Hi, this is Trey Pastor. Welcome to my film series review, uh, Volume 4. Uh, I'm reviewing all four films in the Alien series. Last week, I reviewed uh, Alien. If you want to check out that review of Alien that I did, you can check the link somewhere in here. I'll leave it in there. You can check that review. Okay, this week, I'm reviewing the second film in the franchise, 1986's Aliens. Uh, this was directed, of course, and written by James Cameron. Okay, you know, this is the sequel that came, I guess, six years later, or seven years, I think it's seven years, because Alien came out, I think, in 79. So, and this came out in 1986, I believe? Yeah, 1986. So, yeah, this is uh, seven years later. Anyway, um, in this story, you know, the only survivor, like I said, this is spoiled, the only survivor, of course, was Ellen Ripley of her crew back then, the only survivor of the, of the, uh, of the Alien of course, was Ellen Ripley, played by Scorny Weaver. Okay, and this story takes place basically uh, 50 years, seven years into the future. Uh, Ellen Ripley, uh, played by Scorny Weaver, has survived, you know, a disastrous, you know, you know, you know, wiped out her crew and escaped and stuff. And she's been in hypersleep with her cat for 57 years, and she's been drifting across the galaxy in cryo sleep. Okay, when she gets picked up by a, a salvage, uh, you know, drifting, picks, gets picked up by a salvage, uh, crew who returns to the earth well not to earth I think to a, a colony and um and that's when she just you know she explains you know well uh you know they explain to her that it's been 50 70 years you know since she, you know you've been to earth but she but first of course she doesn't know that she's been out she says she's been sleeping for 50, 70 years but of course she has okay and then she goes to the company and you know basically tries to explain uh what happened on the you know when they got the, uh, what happened on the planet, you know, you know the LV-426 planet, you know, with their encounter with that derelict ship and how it wiped out all her crew. Okay, and of course, they don't really believe her. They, you know, they basically tell her that, you know, that the L-426 has been colonized, basically it's about to be, you know, terraformed by the company. Okay, and there's over 60 families there, I think they even mentioned to her. Okay, and she meets, uh, Paul Reiser's character, uh, which is, uh, he's Carter Burke, he works for the company, okay, like I said, and the people that, you know, when she, she explains her story to, you know, to the company, people, they don't believe her, and they basically tell her that, hey, this planet has been terraformed, okay, and there's over 60 families there, and we haven't heard a peep about any unknown species or anything, okay, and she tries to warn her, but they think she's, she's crazy or something, you know, and that she basically blew up all this expensive equipment, so they really don't, you know, I think that she's you know, a little mentally unbalanced. Okay, and then later Carter Burke comes to her and basically tells her that listen, we've lost contact with the colony, okay, and we need uh, you know an L four twenty six, and we need you to you know serve as a guide. We're gonna have we're gonna send in the space marines with you, so you don't have to worry about you know any trouble in case there's any encounter there. And I'm coming with you. Of course, Carter tells her. Of course, she first turns it down. She you know she doesn't, and he basically tells her, listen, I know you're having nightmares about this stuff and stuff. And, and maybe the best way to exercise the demon is to, is to you know, get back in the saddle and, you know, and come with us, you know, and like I said, you'll be protected, he tells her you'll be protected, we, you know, we have these space marines, these real badasses, they'll go with you to the planet, we'll check on the colonies to make sure that, you know, nothing's wrong with them, and of course, she, like I said, she first turns them down, but then she, uh, she has another nightmare, which she's having a lot of nightmares about, uh, about the alien, so, about the xenomorph, and so she decides, you know, Carter gives her a card, you know, he left his card with her, so she puts it in real quick and tells Carter, listen, we're going to destroy, right, not to capture, right? And he says, sure, that's the plan. <laughs> and she goes, I'm in. So basically, she agrees to go, and in my opinion, she agrees to go because she wants to end these nightmares that she's having, you know, this terror that she's still having of, of these alien, you know, the, of this alien and her last encounter, even though it was 57 years ago, and ever since she's woken up, she's been having these you know, these nightmares about it, so she wants to go and, and ex figure if she goes out there and wipes them out, that'll stop her from the nightmares. Okay, so she goes out with a tough band of space marines. Uh, you have a, 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 I guess a green little, uh, uh, not a lieutenant, who's basically, this is like his uh, first official mission with these space marines, and you have all kinds of uh, wacky characters, and, and part of the cast in this movie, which I love this cast, you have uh, Michael, ba Michael Bean, you know, from you know, Reed Cur Kyle Reese from Terminator movies. He plays Cur Curple Dwayne Hicks. Then you have um, Bill Paxton, who's who's one of my favorites in this movie. He's Private Hudson. 
you have Jeanette Goldstein as uh, Private Vasquez, and you have a bunch of other uh, uh, tough Marine types, all you know, that go and basically, and then also Lance Henderson plays Bishop. He's a, uh, of course, a an android, and uh, of course, of course, uh, Ripley is skeptical of, of any, you know, she even has a a little episode where she explodes at him. Because you know she her spirit previous experience in the movie Aliens, she doesn't trust these uh and, you know these you know because she figured that they're programmed and they'll do the whatever the company tells them, so she doesn't trust her, so, and she's worried of them. Okay, so basically after that, you know they they land on the planet and they're looking you know they look basically looking around for any other colonists, which they can't see. They see basically signs of destruction and stuff, but they can't locate the colonists. They you know they see no signs of them. Okay, and then. They, while, while still searching, they accidentally, you know, catch a glimpse of something real fast, and they wind up catching her, and it's a little girl uh, called Newt, <laughs> a little, long, little girl doesn't talk much, and kinda, and Ripley kind of takes her under her wing, just, you know, the, you know, cleans her up a little bit and talks to her and kind of gets, you know, protective of her and takes and, and winds up taking care of her, and then, of course, the Marines discover, uh, I guess, these little alien creatures in these uh in the med lab okay you know the same type that got on uh I got the guy's name uh john hurt's character in the original alien they see them and they discover i think four of them and then two of them are alive and the rest are dead and of course you know and so of course you know ripley's you know you know basically saying uh this is crazy and, and then of course after that they they actually do locate all they, they're still searching for the colonists and they locate them all in one area okay and they they say it's like a like a town hall they, i think even uh corporal hicks says it's like a town hall meeting because they you know they sense on the scanners that all of them are all in one place so they of course send in the space marines again send them in again to you know to make contact with the colonists to see what's going on why they all huddled in one place and of course that's when they go down to i think it's level three and of course, Ripley tells basically tells him the, the Green Lieutenant, "Listen, you can't have them firing weapons down there because it's right next to the reactor. And of course, if any if they hit, it will set off a you know basically a a big explosion and a nuclear blast, basically. And of course, so the sergeant has to take you know most of the firepower away from them. They said oh, you can't fire any those cannons in there, so they they basically have to basically use basically handguns. And of course, there's two Marines, two tough you know." Uh, Private Vasquez, who was my, okay, and uh, I think Lieutenant Gorman, they're too tough, and they actually, you know, fake giving them, you know, their, but they have backup weapons, and then all of a sudden, you know, they're searching and searching, and of course, then uh, uh, Private Hudson, he's looking with the indicator, and he sees that, you know, and they basically, basically, they start looking around, and they see, and they see all these humans, they see all these humans webbed up basically look like, look like they're in cocoons and they look like they're like they're dead for the most part until they touch one of them one of them was alive and it basically says basically wakes up and say basically begs one of the marines to kill you know to please kill me kill me kill me and then of course that's when they actually see one of their first aliens and it bursts out of her chest and of course they fry her <laughs> okay and kill the alien and then of course that brings in the real aliens then all of a sudden they're descended upon from every which way and of course it, you know they have to basically fight their way out, and they're firing, and it's chaotic, and it's it's, it's crazy, it's nuts. And of course, uh, the, the the green lieutenant, I think Lieutenant Gorman, that's the that's the, the character's name. He's that green. Of course, he's panicking, he's sweating because he doesn't know his Marines are getting basically massacred left and right. And you know, Ripley is basically telling, "Come on, you got to get him out of there, get him out of there." And then she, you know, she doesn't wait, and then she just basically takes the little uh, uh, vehicle and starts driving to you know to to their location to pick him up. And of course, they you know they get in, and you know, like I said, most of them have been killed. There's only a few left, and basically they have to, you know, they hide out to try to you know protect themselves from the aliens and make plans to get off the planet. And I don't want to say anymore. I think I explained most of the part, but not all of it. Okay, but this movie is a great kick-ass sequel to Alien. Uh, James Cameron really did a great job up and up, up in the ante from the first movie because the first movie I think was more about the Savage crew, and they were more joking around. They were reg regular. It was just a job to them. But this time, you have a bunch of Marines, and you have, you know, Ripley, who's had the experience. And then you have, of course, 
Carter Burke by Paul Reiser, who works for the company. And then you have Bishop, you have another uh, android, and this and he ups the stakes in this because you, this time you have the aliens fighting against Marines who have firepower to fight back. And it's a great, just a great sci-fi classic. It's a great sci-fi, science fiction action movie. And Sigourney Weaver is so kick-ass as Ripley. She is great, and like I said, she has great chemistry with, with most of the characters in the movie, especially with little, the actress that plays Nuke, you know, like she, she becomes protective of her, and, you know, when, once they find her and, you know, make sure, you know, she's like a mother bear to her, and, and she's going to protect her no matter what. Okay, and you have great uh, supporting, I said Bill Paxton was great as Private Hudson because he was always joking around and joking around, and then when this crap hits the fan, he, you know, he, he reacts like, a, I guess, a regular person would. And, and he's he's hilarious and funny at the same time. Hilarious and funny at the same time, and and he's you know he's he's acting he's you know for Marine, he's acting for, he's acting like I guess like the audience would act. He's acting for you know so you can empathize with his character because he's you know he's he's basically you know looking at the worst case scenario. He's saying, hey look at these alien creatures. They're all over this place and they're gonna overwhelm us. And you know he starts to you know he basically starts to panic and they have to calm him down. And uh, Michael Bain. Bean's character, who plays Colonel Hicks, has to basically calm him down, and you have tough Jeanette Goldstein, who I love this private Vasco is a real hard ass, and of course, and she's tough, real tough, and I, I like her character as well. And again, Aliens, I definitely would give it, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I always debate whether I give it an 8 or 8.5, but I, I like the way James Cameron upped the ante in this movie, okay? And the Aliens, you see more of them in this movie than the first movie. Well, the first movie, they were kind of hidden as much, you didn't see them as much, but in this movie, you get to see them, and you get to see the Queen as well, and he upped the ante with the Marines, and I like the whole battle, and Ripley is such a kick-ass character in this movie. She's even more of a kick-ass character in this one. In the first movie, she was kind of a supporting character, but in this movie, she's she's the star, okay? And she really, Sigourney Weaver really plays that part very well, okay? And I really liked her performance in this movie, and I, so that's why I'm going to give Aliens a 9 out of 10. I absolutely love Aliens, okay? So that's my review of Aliens, so... Let me know what you think of Aliens. Feel free to leave comments down below. And tune in next week where I'm going to be reviewing Alien 3, okay? The third movie in the series, okay? So, um, again, let me know what you think of Aliens, okay? Feel free to leave comments down below. And this is Trey Pastor saying, so tune in next Sunday for my review of Alien, Aliens 3. Or Alien 3, I'm sorry. They call Alien 3. Okay, tune in next Sunday for that, okay? And this is Trey Pastor saying so long and take care.